Hey guys, welcome to TCR. Sid here. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Well, we're getting into fall and you know what that means. Chilly weather. So it's time to make some chili. There's hundreds of different ways and different recipes out there to make chili, but I have a few things that I do when I make my chili that's a little bit different than everybody else's, and let me tell you, they're crowd pleasers. So I'm going to let you in on my safeguarded trade secrets of how I do my chili and what I add to it to kick it up a notch and make it a little something extra special. I will be using dried beans, so I have pre-soaked them for the last uh, couple days here, getting them ready for today. But if you want to use canned beans, that's totally up to you. Just make sure that you rinse them really well before you dump them in your pot. First thing you're going to need, of course, is your beans. And as I mentioned, these have been sitting for a little while. I have a mix of black-eyed peas, black beans, kidney beans, some white beans in here. You can use any mixture of beans that you like. This is just the mixture that I'm using. And yes, it's a lot. I'm making a lot. And as always, I measure with my heart, not with a recipe. So use good judgment. You live your best life that way. I feel like use what you have, use what you have on hand, and you can stretch it out that way. First thing I'm gonna do is chop up some red bell peppers. Throw these bell peppers off to the side here. Now I'm gonna use a couple of onions and get these chopped up. Then we're gonna take these onions, add them in with the peppers here. Also wanna get some garlic, a hefty amount. Measure garlic with our heart. This is like not enough. I'm gonna use some powdered as well. I believe there's never enough garlic in something. You can fight me on that, uh, but you'll be wrong. Some fresh ground black pepper, a little bit of salt. I'm gonna be adding more later. This is just a tad bit right now. I'm gonna get this pan heated up here with just a little bit of oil because I really want these to kind of caramelize a little bit. And this is where the next special ingredient that not everybody uses comes into play. You wanna grab a beer. It doesn't matter what kind. This is just an old one that I had sitting in the fridge. I left it on the counter for two reasons. One, there's no reason to pour a cold beer in here and make it super fizzy when, the, when I'm cooking. And number two, um, this will help also make it a little bit more flat that way. Also got a little bit of mushrooms left over. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in here with my onions as well. In my other pan here, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one started with no oil, nothing in it. I've got some ground beef uh, that I'm gonna go ahead and cook up in there separately for now. I'm going to be mixing in some seasonings with it here in just a second once the pan gets nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and dump all my onions and my peppers in here. Mix in that garlic. Now I have a couple of cayenne peppers here that I'm going to chop up real quick. Now over here with my ground beef, uh, you can use any kind of ground meat you want. You can use chicken, you can use lamb if you want it. I mean, whatever you want. This is an 80-20 mix, which is good because there'll be a little bit of fat in the pan, which is what I want. I'm going to add a little bit of some of our homemade cayenne pepper to this meat. Of course, I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic in here with the meat. And again, I'm not like really cooking this all the way through. I'm kind of just browning it a little bit and mixing it up with some seasoning. But I'm not cooking it like all the way done in this pan. I'm gonna pull it out and just kind of par cook it. My other secret ingredient here is my potatoes. Now I've washed these up, these are just a few. The reason I like to let that grease get in there is because once I take the meat out, I'm gonna actually fry these potatoes up in that grease before I add it back in. It's a really extra little unexpected thing that people are always commenting on when I make my chili. They're like, what is this? There's something different in here. And they can never, for whatever reason, they can't seem to wrap their brain around it. You don't wanna cut them too thin, but you don't want them too thick either. All right, my meat is just the way I want it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and throw it into my big pot. Right now it's just by itself in there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull as much of this out as I can, leaving that grease in there. Hence using the kind of strainer spoon thing here to keep the grease in the pan for my potatoes. So I've got my potatoes cut up the way I want here. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit them with a little bit of salt. I'm 
I'm not worried about cooking these completely at this point. I'm more just trying to kind of fry the, um, fry them up just a hair first. All I'm gonna do right now is pour just a little bit of that beer in here, deglaze the pan a little bit with it, let these kind of simmer on low with this. I also like to hit it with a little bit of citrus. So I'm using some lemon that I've got sitting around here. Stir that all in. Let it just kind of simmer on low while those potatoes are frying. So I'm actually gonna be splitting this big batch between two pots here. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump some of my beans into this pot here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my meat out of my big pot in here with my beans, as well as some of these potatoes. These other ones are still frying up. Put some of these peppers and onions in here, and some in here. Again, I'm measuring with my heart, people. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. This is definitely the bigger batch, so it's getting more of this. Aside from the other seasonings I like to use, I like to get like a, a generic chili seasoning. I think this one's McCormick. This one's an organic taco seasoning. So I like to add some taco seasoning. I'm gonna do about half and half in here. Not half, because these pots are different sizes, but you, you get the idea. I'm gonna split it between them as evenly as I can. Same thing with the chili. Now that does not mean that I'm done seasoning. By any means. Just getting this all mixed together. Turn this heat down a little bit here. Now I usually like to use fresh tomatoes, but this time of year, it wasn't really an option uh, at the store so much with everything going on. So I'm using some crushed tomatoes, Italian style crushed tomatoes, and some regular diced tomatoes. I'm also gonna add some tomato paste. I also like to add a packet of fajita seasoning for a couple of reasons. It adds a really nice smoky flavor to it. And it also, uh, because of the cornstarch that's in it, it also kind of acts as a thickening agent for your chili as well. Now I'm gonna add some homemade chicken stock. Again, I'm eyeballing this, guys, because, you know, I, that's just how I do all of this. It's how I live my best life. You wanna be careful how much stock you add, though, with your amount of beans and everything, and your tomatoes, because you don't want it to be too soupy. But you do need some liquid in there for the beans to absorb, even though you've soaked them or they've come out of the can, they are gonna, they're gonna change, especially if your beans are, are still not cooked like mine. But as you can see here, like already, this is about the right consistency that I want it for, for right now before it cooks all the way. I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning to this. Um, just your basic things, like some more of that beer. Now that I've split this and it's gonna simmer for a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit more of that cayenne pepper that's homemade, so it's super hot. More garlic because my Italian ancestors are whispering in my ear that they need more. Add some more pepper. Now those seasoning packets have a lot of salt in them already, so you can salt it a little bit more, but I wouldn't advise going overboard until you get to the point where you're actually tasting it because you can end up making it way too salty way too quickly and that's definitely not what you want. I also like to add a little bit more paprika, ground cumin, you don't want to go overboard with that, and a little bit of coriander. But once they've kind of come up to temperature there, I've got all my seasonings in, I'm ready to let it sit and simmer again. If you were going to do this in a crock pot, I would, I would do it on, you know, either medium or low depending on your time frame if you're gonna be gone all day you could go ahead and do, let it sit for the eight hours you're not gonna wreck it chili's one of those things that's not like you can really overcook it it's just a matter of if you've got it cooked enough the two final things that i like to add is a couple of bay leaves i'm just gonna kind of push these down a little bit i'm trying not to break them up you could do a bouquet garni if you want and tie it up so you don't lose it into pieces in there but sometimes it's tricky with the chili but I have faith in you, go find it later. If you don't pull it out, it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna go ahead and stick, I make sure I pull out all the seeds from that lemon. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that lemon in there too. Okay, I've got these chilies both simmering on low for the next few hours. 
Uh, because I soaked these beans and they are not out of a can, they have not been cooked at all yet, just softened. So they are gonna need to cook longer than if I just popped open a can and let it simmer for a little while. So I, I went ahead and covered them. I do have the, the steam escape thing open on this one as well as this lid kind of off center so, so that it uh, also can do the same thing. But I'm really gonna let it sit and just basically kind of babysit it on the stove top. Like I said, if you decide to do this in a crock pot, you can kind of dump it, set it on the setting that you know does soups and things well in your crock pot. I have one crock pot that does really well on high uh, for a short period of time, but not really well on low for a long period of time. You know how they get fussy when they get old. But <laughs> so you, you kind of have to kind of play with that around a little bit yourself, but I'm gonna just kind of babysit this. My game plan is to have it ready uh, about five o'clock. So I should be right on target for that. Um, and it may be done even well before then, uh, depending on how long the beans take to actually cook. But a safe bet is somewhere between two and four hours since I am cooking a variety of beans. So we're just gonna kind of babysit them and check on them from time to time. Well, I just made Tony his to-go package. It's piping hot. It looks amazing. I taste tested it. It tastes amazing. Super, super hot because it's been cooking since, what, 2.30 that it was actually like all ingredients were in there and it's been sitting here simmering and cooking and cooking. My house smells amazing. This looks awesome. Excited to have some chili for dinner tonight. And it's one of those things too, like I said, you could put it in the crock pot if you want and you really just kind of, as long as you add your, you know, tomato base and those little extras that I talked about that I like to add, the potatoes, the beer, and the different kinds of seasoning, you're really gonna have some really amazing chili that's gonna leave people going, oh, that's different, and it's a crowd pleaser. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get the notifications.